And here it is, the original part, the FDM printed part, as well as the SLA part. So I recently picked up this Leatherman Wave Plus multi-tool in the black oxide finish. And a quick note on the black oxide, it comes from the factory with a very grimy um, surface finish and kind of gunk to it that I had to wash off with. Uh, water and soap and a few paper towels but once that's cleared off it's been a pretty good multi-tool thus far but without going into a huge review I learned pretty quickly that it did not come with a belt clip so after searching around online for the belt clip I was curious if I could actually model one and print it in FDM and SLA and then compare that to the actual part which is shown right there when the belt clip and the lanyard piece arrived, I was actually pretty shocked at how slim this part and delicate this part actually was. So when I'm measuring it, I calipered it just over a thickness of one millimeter. So I thought this would be a perfect test to really just see how fine our FDM printers can go and compare that to the SLA. Up until now, the actually most fine and, and small dimension that I printed was some parts for this Nebuchadnezzar uh, model that we're building, but these antenna pieces, which were printed on an AnyCubic um, M3 Plus SLA resin printer, and please wear uh, proper gloves and, and you know protection when you're doing resin printing, but this is some of the delicacy of the parts that were coming off that build plate. No, I mean, you can see the, the micron level detail that that printer is able to achieve. So I wasn't super worried about the, the SLA, but the FDM really I was curious about. The antennas here, just for reference that I mentioned, uh, the base calipers at 2.2 millimeters, and then the thickness of the thinner part comes in at just over one millimeter. Um, and that was just a FDM print of that nose cone for the hovercraft. I thought just this gives you some more perspective into you know the quality of resin parts that we're able to pull off those printers um, and then you know being able to see if we can achieve anywhere near that with the FDM. All right so before we go ahead and CAD this part I just had to take some quick measurements uh, just getting some you know rough overall dimensions with the calipers more so for when I'm actually laying out the the sketches in Fusion 360. I don't have to keep referencing my perspective imagery um, that you're about to see in a second. Now, to touch on the perspective shots that you'll actually see me import uh, a photo of into, and here's more, you know, engineering perspective drawings, top, side, and bottom view. Um, this does help for the overall shape. I haven't noticed that it helps. You can set, obviously, to match the dimension of your overall file, but I do it mostly for the curvatures and to match the overall shape of the design. But let's jump into Fusion 360 and get this thing designed and enjoy. And then once we have that done, we can go ahead and throw it on the 3D printers. All right, and after about three hours in Fusion 360, we have the final part. All right, so after exporting the STL file from Fusion 360, I put it into Kira here to go ahead and generate the G code for the printer. I laid two down on the build plate and then configured the settings to what you're gonna see here before getting it over to the Cobrigo for printing.
All right, and here are the results on the Cobra Go. Now, I just got this printer a few weeks back. It's been kind of a challenge to dial in it in, but we're getting there and it's able to generate prints. I've gotten better prints than this. The base on here in the brim looks pretty shoddy, but um, you'll see, I guess this gives you a good comparison of a budget printer compared to a really nice printer. This is a one hour print. I did try in Cura laying it out in a better orientation and actually standing the uh, part upwards, uh, which helps. And this is actually what the Bamboo Studio, when I wanted to print it on my Bamboo Labs print printer, this is actually the orange or auto orient that it selected. So this is probably the best. This is with a tree support to kind of support that overhang, which I don't think you need other slicers, at least uh, the bamboo, you know, which is built off Prusa did not give me that tree support, but Cura did. So pretty uh, not great results with this layout. And after doing some part cleanup and breaking quite a few of these, I was able to achieve, uh, I don't know, this, for what at least, and this one broke, of course, too. So it gives you a good idea. But our calipers were measuring it at just over a millimeter. So we did achieve kind of the target thickness and the flexibility you've seen in the last few clips of the part bending um, under, you know, some pressure. Just gives you an idea of kind of how rigid these are. Uh, and a little bit you know more up close unfortunately i was a little bummed out all my hard work modeling it um the clip is just a little bit off uh to go ahead and fit the knife but it just goes to show you you know the refinement that after you do a design you'll have to undergo kind of in the testing stage but the sla one actually kind of fits in there uh, but looks pretty good now i want to touch on this because at 1.75 millimeters even in, in an fdm part that's kind of where you start to get the rigidity and the, the structure that maybe we were looking for in a part like this or at least you know at the very bare minimum so you can see how much it springs back pretty quickly um, and rebounds so 1.75 it seems like in the fdm world is kind of the thickness where you start to see some of that structure Okay, let's talk SLA. So this is on the M3 Plus from Anycubic. Um, something that I noticed actually using this, the screen always says a time. So there it says one hour and 25 minutes estimated print time. But when the plate actually splashes the resin and we're using the Anycubic Clear, as you saw, the water washable. Um, actually, after it splashes and you go back to the screen, it'll show you nearly a double print estimation time. And that's really the more accurate time. So there it says three hours and 11 minutes now and that's actually what it took um, to go ahead and print this but i was surprised and happy with the results really sla man when you pull it off the part detail becomes quickly uh, apparent and you know it's really nice to see some of these prints come off especially when they've still got a, a wet layer of resin on them they look so clear uh, it really just helps you know <laughs> catch your eye on this style print And after a bit of cleanup, you have the final SLA part. Still pretty flexible, but it does measure exactly where we wanted to be at, which is just around a millimeter. A little bit more accurate probably to the CAD model, 0.83 millimeters in width. And as you saw in the very first clip, there they are. Um, it's the metal original clip, you know, the FDM printed clip that we went ahead and modeled. And finally, the SLA printed Leatherman clip. All right, so I recently got the P1S from Bamboo Lab, and unlike most people on YouTube, I actually paid for mine, but uh, I, I wanted to test it out because I, I really thought that we could achieve a better quality with FDM, so it was a little bonus clip. Uh, when I got the printer, I actually threw our file into the slicer here, and then here was the result. So pulling it off the build plate, this is the audio orient, or excuse me, auto orient that it did. And it looks pretty good, a little stringy, but man, at the speed this thing prints, it's insane. I think of the total print time, what was it, 18 minutes or something? Like seven of that is the auto leveling of the bed. So <laughs> could even cut that down. But, and as a, as a, just a testament to, you know, my loyalty to any cubic, as I got started with a lot of these printers, um, I, I'm oriented it the exact same way as the Bamboo Labs, but this is the result. This is on the Cobra Max with some inland PLA. So a few variants, you know, PLA and uh, different filaments, but there you have it. There's a side-by-side -side as a little bonus of really the fine detail we could get if we were, you know, using top-of-the-line printer. So hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.